Good day everyone, this is Teacher Nori. In this video, we are going to talk about relationships in tropical rainforests, coral reefs, and mangroves. First, let us talk about some terms. First is ecology. Ecology is a branch of biology that deals with the relations of organisms to one another and to their physical surroundings. Next is biosphere. Biosphere are the regions of the Earth's waters, crust, and atmosphere in which organisms can exist. Ecosystem is the community and its physical environment. Community is the population of all species occupying the same area. Population is a group of individuals of the same kind or the same species occupying a given area at the same time. Metabolism refers to the cell's capacity to extract and convert energy from its surroundings and use energy to maintain itself grow and reproduce. Rainforest is an area of tall, mostly evergreen trees and a high amount of rainfall. These are the Earth's oldest living ecosystems, with some surviving in their present form for at least 70 million years. Coral reef is an underwater ecosystem characterized by reef building corals. It is built from colonies of coral polyps held together by calcium carbonate. Mangrove swamp is a distinct saline woodland or shrubland habitat formed by mangrove trees in brackish tidal water. Biodiversity is having different species living together in a place. It includes variations in plants and animals. There are several factors that affect the community structure. These are interactions between climate and topography that help dictate temperatures rainfall, soil composition, and other physical conditions in the habitat. Second is the kinds and amount of food and other resources that are available through the year. Next is the adap adaptive traits that allow members of a species to survive physical and chemical conditions of the habitat and to exploit specific resources. Other factors are interactions between species, including competition, predation, and mutually beneficial activities, and the overall pattern and actual history of changing population sizes, the arrival and disappearances of species, and physical disturbances to the habitat. Now let us review the relationships in nature. First is mutualism. Mutualism is a relationship where both organisms benefit. Examples of these are roots of some plants and fungi, nitrogen fixing bacteria and legumes, acacia ants and acacia. Next is commensalism. It is a relationship where one organism benefits from the other without harming it. Examples are frogs hiding in plants, birds nesting in trees, and a golden jackal and tiger. Another relationship in nature is parasitism. It is a relationship between two species where one gains benefits at the expense of the other. The one that gains is called the parasite while the other is called the host. Examples of these are birds laying their egg in other birds' nests like the brown-headed cowbird to the eastern Phoebe and the tapeworm and pig and lice and humans. Next is competition. This is a relationship that occurs when members of more than one species fight or compete for the same resource. Examples of these are squirrels and woodpeckers fight for nesting rights in the same tree, lions and cheetahs compete for the same antelope and gazelle for prey, and plants in a forest competing for sunlight and water. The last relationship in nature is predation. Predation refers to the flow of energy between two organisms, predator and the prey. In this interaction, the prey loses energy and the predator gains energy. Examples are man eating eggs, gazelles eating grass, lions eating antelopes. The Foundation for the Philippine Environment, or, or FPE, describes Philippine biodiversity as caused by the Philippines' widely varied geographic features from isolated islands surrounded by water to staggered mountain ranges to the various inland waters within them, 
making the country a conducive place for the survival of many types of ecosystem. Our country is blessed with a variety of ecosystems that can be grouped into terrestrial ecosystem, examples of which are beech forest, pine forest, grassland, mossy forest, and forest over limestone. We have freshwater ecosystem like the lacustrine or the lakes and ponds, uh, riverine from rivers, streams, and creeks, and palustrine for marshes. We have brackish or estuarine ecosystem like the mangrove swamp and nipa swamp and saltwater marine ecosystem like the mud flats, seagrass belts and coral reefs and the last one is the special ecosystem which includes caves. The forest ecosystem. The forest ecosystem receives, absorbs and redistributes rainwater to support life not only within themselves but also to nearby adjacent ecosystems where the water reserves are released. It is the primary source of water which enables other forms of natural resources to flourish and become productive. They are also natural providers of clean air and food. Forest ecosystems also contributes in the electricity generation and provides raw materials for houses and other forms of shelter. It also supports human livelihood and it serves as a buffer zone for from storms and prevents soil erosion how can we protect forest ecosystem here are five basic steps to saving rainforest first is to teach teach others about the importance of the environment and how to save help save rainforests second is to restore damaged ecosystems by planting trees on land where forests have been cut have been cut down. Next is to encourage people to live in a way that doesn't hurt the environment. Next is to establish parks to protect rainforests and wildlife. And the last step is to support companies and organizations that operate in ways that minimize damage to the environment. Mangrove ecosystem. Mangroves are medium sized and highly tolerant plants that can survive in brackish water. Brackish water means uh, water that is more saline or salty than fresh water, but not as salty as seawater. The Philippines is home to more than half of the 70 mangrove species of the world. It is a breeding and feeding ground for local terrestrial and aquatic species, as well as a stopover for migratory species. They also contribute to ecological balance by stabilizing and minimizing sedimentation and siltation in coral reefs, while also facilitating the land area by way of accumulated soil and debris. Other importance of mangrove ecosystems are, it protects coastlines against erosive wave action and strong coastal winds and serves as a natural barrier against tsunamis and torrential storms. It also prevents salt water from intruding into rivers. It retain, concentrate, and recycle nutrients and remove toxic substances through a natural filtering process. It provides resources for coastal communities who depend on the plants for timber, fuel, food, medicinal herbs, and other forest products. It is also an important breeding ground for many fishes, crabs, prawns, and other marine animals, essential for sustaining the fishing industry. How can we protect mangrove ecosystem? Some of the ways that we can help conserve mangroves are, first is by making a report of all the remaining mangrove forests within forest reserves and protected areas. Next is devising a well-balanced coastal land use plan such as maintaining a sustainable limit in logging and other harvesting activities of its resources. Next is to retain protective mangrove buffers along coastlines and rivers to prevent erosion. Another way to protect mangrove ecosystem is by managing mangrove forests as fishery reserves to encourage environmentally sensitive commercial aquaculture activities, raising public awareness and educating the community to discourage indiscriminate clearing and to introduce social forestry schemes. The damaged forest areas can be planted and managed for small-scale village timber enterprises. Some mangrove species are particularly ideal for mangrove plantations as they are both fast-growing and lucrative. 
coral reef ecosystem. The Philippines is part of the Coral Triangle, boasting a sterling reputation when it comes to aquatic ecosystems. The Verde Island in Batangas has been noted to be the center of the center of marine biodiversity in the world. It takes centuries to build and it is very delicate. It is a natural habitat for fish species and other marine organisms, where feeding, breeding, and spawning happens. It serves as natural breakwaters that protect coastal areas from waves and storms. It facilitates coralline sand production or the production of white sand and it enables oxygen production through supporting photosynthetic algae. How can we damage the coral reef ecosystem? A recent example of damage for the coral reef occurred at the Tubataha Reef in the Sulu Sea in January 2013 where approximately 1,000 square meters of coral reef was damaged. The coral reef damage is a serious concern. As of 2006, only 5% of the Philippine coral reefs are in excellent condition, while 32% are severely damaged, which is according to the study made by the Haribon Foundation in 2006. The World Resources Institute in 2013 reported that 85% of the reefs in the coral triangle as a whole are threatened shadowing the global average which stands at 60 percent how can we protect the coral reef ecosystem here are 10 ways to protect the coral reefs this is according to NOAA. first is to choose sustainable seafood learn how to make smart seafood choices second is to conserve water the less water you use the less runoff and waste water Next is to volunteer. Volunteer in local beach or reef cleanups. If you don't live near the coast, get involved in protecting your watershed. Next is by uh, not giving corals as a present or souvenir. It takes corals decades or longer to create reef structures, so leave them on the reef. Using long-lasting light bulbs is also a bright idea. Energy efficient light bulbs reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Climate change is one of the lead, leading threats to coral reef survival. Another way of protecting coral reef ecosystem is by not touching corals when you are diving because they are alive and stirred up sediments can smother corals. Next is to check your sunscreen active ingredients. Seek shade between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m using ultraviolet protection factor sunwear and choose sunscreens with chemicals that do not harm marine life. Next is to be a marine crusader. In addition to your own trash, carry away the trash that others have left behind. Next is to not send chemicals into our waterways. Nutrients from excess fertilizer increases algae, per algae growth that blocks sunlight to corals. And the last one is to practice safe boating. Anchor in sandy areas away from the coral and sea grasses so that the anchor and chain do not drag on nearby corals. Another way of protecting the coral reef is to make sure that you are environmentally conscious when visiting coral reefs, coastal areas, or any natural ecosystems. Hire local guides to support the economy and removing all trash from an area. Never touch or harass wildlife and avoid damaging the places that you visit. And that is the end of our video. Thank you for watching. Until next time!